What's up, Doombots? Tony Scangili here with a kind of review of how events work in Disney Sorcerer's Arena and what they're going to mean to you. This is not going to go into detail about any specific events right now. Those are going to be different videos. Basically, as an event is announced, I will do a video regarding uh, what it is, what the characters are, etc., etc. I'm just going to talk to you a little bit about events in general and what they mean to you as a player, regardless of what type of player you are. So, what I can tell you from the amount of time I've been playing this game in the beta to now is that this game is 100% driven by events. There is no major change to how characters are added to the game or how characters are introduced outside of events. And events come in a pseudo cycle. Uh, it's hard to pin it down now. My assumption is going to be every three months or so an event will return. It could be more or less. We can't know that until Glue goes and tells us, so right now it's good to just understand why events are important. So, there are a couple of different types of events. Uh, this right here, the Mulan event that's currently going on, is an engagement event. An engagement event is an event where the more you play the game during the event, the better off you're going to be in regards of the event. So. For Mulan, the more energy you spend, whether that be your daily energy, whether you're purchasing energy with gems, or you're spending money to purchase gems to purchase energy, see where I'm getting at? You are unlocking more and more orbs, which will give you more Mulan shards and, of course, a chance at Shan Yu shards. Also, these events tend to have tie-in offers, both for gems and for money, that you can you know, purchase at your own leisure. In general, these events are going to be fun, but what's really important to note is that characters, as I've said before, only matter at seven star. That's the end game goal for you. You don't get a character to four star and then go, all right, I'm done. You might do that as you're leveling because you just don't have the time to invest. You have to switch between villains and heroes, but you still need to be able to finish a character. So when these events come around, you should treat them based on how you treat the game. Will you be doing everything in your power to max the star level of these characters? If not, then you don't have to worry too much. Maybe for you, the cap is unlocking a character. Maybe it's getting them to a certain star level just so you can use them in club dungeon. Either way, it's gonna come up to you and, and what's comfortable for you. So these kind of engagement events, like the Milan that we're gonna see in the future, these are going to be kind of donations of characters to the players like everyone can get one whether or not you get one to a point where they are usable that's going to depend on you completely i'm not going to like i said not going into detail about mulan just the style of event the other style of event is more in line with what we've seen now they they differ a little bit but the onward event right now is almost exactly the same as the lion king and toy story events uh, with slight differences. To take a quick look, the way these events are structured, uh, most of the events, uh, to be fair, are structured, is the opening event is a free-for-all. The opening node is a free-for-all. You basically just progress based on whatever limitations they've set. For example, this one has no limitations. As long as I have a character at 2-star, 3-star, 4-star, etc., I can progress in this event. Uh, which is great for me because I have quite a bit of characters at this level. For the average player, especially a newer player, this event, it's unlikely that they're going to have many characters beyond three or four star, or at least enough that they can truly accomplish uh, the tasks in this event. So this event right here uh, requires five characters at four plus star and it gives you an amount of shards for ian or the the first character on this list this is of course independent of how much money you've spent to unlock or buy more shards or whatever the case may be the good thing is these events also give an arbitrary amount of materials that will help you level the character and you can not only repeat these uh, twice a day in general you can claim a refresh or you can spend gems to refresh both attempts as often as you'd like. The refresh cost goes up every time. Ultimately, this is going to be your immediate initial interaction with the first character for the event. The second event, or the second node in the event, tends to require the first character uh, before you can start doing anything. And 
unlocks the second character. Surprise, right? So in this one, you need a one, two, or three star in in order to start farming each individual node. And obviously, I think it goes without saying, the further up you go, the more access you're going to have to character shards, uh, the easier it's going to be to unlock and further progress the characters. That said, um, if you're not spending money, you are going to have to play this like a little bit of a ladder where you climb one rung at a time, one hand, one foot, you know how it works, and it'll be okay. This uh, event is very similar to a lot of the other events where the first one is a free-for-all, the second one requires the guy from the first one, and then of course the final one or the special character is unlocked with both of them. So you complete the first one, you unlock your Ian, you complete the second one, you unlock Barley, congratulations, you can start working on this event. Now there is a limited amount of supplies you can accrue from these events. So I've already completed all of the onward coins I could get from this. And that's kind of unfortunate because if I can't progress much further, if I can't go into the three, and as you can see, I can't go into the four right now, I'm not gonna have a great time continuing my progress towards Manticore, who is the special unlock for this event. Okay, uh, depending on the character, that might be unfortunate, that might incentivize me to give them some money, or what it's going to end up doing is nothing. I don't believe these characters are particularly useful to me. I'm not impressed by them, so I'm not going out of my way and spending more money to invest in them. I will just wait for the next pass. And that's something that a lot of free-to-play players are also going to have to come to grips with, that not everything is going to be accessible immediately to them. They're going to have to wait for multiple passes, not only to necessarily unlock a character, but definitely to invest in and rank up characters. Uh, and as I had said earlier, because this event requires characters at five star, it's relatively easy. Some events, like the Aladdin event, not only require characters at a specific star level, but they definitely require hero characters. So now, if you happen to have been investing only in villains the entire time, you see that, uh-oh, I need to have a couple of regular hero characters in order to progress further in this event, in addition to any of the limitations that these events place on their own, like Ian and Barley. For that reason, I think that the most important thing most players need to know going into events and how events work, obviously aside from what the event requirements are, which I'm working on infographics to kind of discuss how unlocks work and basically the minimum amount of investment you can spend in order to make some progress in characters or character events, you, you need to be able to enter an event not only with the required characters, but with the limited time characters that are event exclusive. And that's how it's going to go. Uh, I, I like these events because they give you something new and exciting. They functionally give you characters, uh, at least to unlock so you can kind of see how they are. And as I said, even though characters are pretty much intended to be brought from zero stars to seven stars as quickly as possible, that doesn't necessarily mean that unlocking a character is of no value to you. For example, you can bring a character up to a, a decent gear tier and start using them in Club Dungeon or for a tower that you need. Now, all three of these characters are mythical characters and some of the towers require a mythical character to use. So. If this is your introduction to a mythical character and you need to invest a little bit in them to progress in some game mode, great, you know, go for it. Uh, and as I, we get into more specifics of events, I will love to tell you more and more about what to do. That said, it's really important to note that these events, when this event ends in six days and nine hours, a new event is going to come in and it's going to be the same thing. And that's why I think it's super important to follow the coin flip rule of Work on your heroes until you can't progress in the heroes campaign anymore. And this way you can farm up villains. Then work on your villains until you can't progress in the villains campaign anymore and repeat the process. This way you're always going to be able to focus on one thing or another. As of right now, more events require hero characters at certain star levels and gear tiers that I would recommend making sure that your opening team of characters, you know, your Sully your Aladdin, your Mickey, your Ariel, you work on at least three of them. 
because the more you work on those characters, in addition to like whatever team you happen to be building, you are getting the heroes that are pretty good just on their own that will help you progress in the events that require them. As for the villains, like I said, not many of them require villains and the ones that do require very specific villains, which are the downtown villains team. And I think I've been recommending the downtown villains team as the starting villains team for everybody. So if you're working on them, you'll be set up for at least the one event that requires downtown villains and then any event that happens to require villains at high star. Outside of that, that's pretty much how events go. Do me a favor and comment below. Let me know what you think about the current events in the game from what perspective you're at, whether you're full free to play, whether you're a big fat blubbery whale like me. Let me know where you stand on the events, whether you're excited for them or not, because I'll go and give that feedback over to Glue and tell them, hey, you got to do a little bit more. I personally like any event where everybody accesses a character and then from that point you progress into how much uh, further into a unlocking a character you get whether it's an immediate uh, seven star or whether it's getting to the fours like I always recommend that's up to me so comment below let me know what you think on that and I want you guys to have a good night have a great day I've been Tony Scangeli and I'll catch you later <laughs>